On this program, we've spoken quite a bit about President Trump's affinity for dictators and despots. He says he fell in love with Kim Jong-un, the murderous dictator who runs North Korea and is building up its nuclear program, even though the president says otherwise. He also gave the Saudi crown prince a free pass even after the Saudis murdered a Washington Post journalist. And just today, the president welcomed Egyptian President el-Sisi to the White House. And I want to remind you, el-Sisi, he took power in a military coup that overturned an elected leader just five years ago. We don't even have time to rehash the president's behavior with Vladimir Putin. This soundbite, it says it all, as it shows the president of the United States believing the Russian leader over his own intelligence agencies. They think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial. Now, my next guest, he writes about politics for Slate, and the name of his recent piece says it all. Trump's treachery goes way beyond Russia. He's not working for Putin. He's working for any dictator who flatters him. William Saladin, he joins us now. And uh, William, you know, there's a line in your article. I happen to agree with it, but you have to say it twice for it to sink in. It's not just that he's working with bad guys who've done terrible things. He repeatedly collaborates with tyrants against our own country. And, and that seems to be the commonality here. Their interests do not align with American interests. And maybe you say you hold your nose, you do it for geopolitical reasons. They're working against American interests and time and time again, he'll throw his arms around these guys. Yeah, um, and I don't think it's, I, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right? I don't, I'm not one of the people who believes that, say, Vladimir Putin has some kind of compromising information on Trump. It, the evidence of Trump's behavior is that he is not particularly concerned about American nationality or who, who supports America. He likes anybody who likes Donald Trump. So it's fairly easy for a dictator like Kim Jong-un or Vladimir Putin to curry favor with Trump. And then when U.S. intelligence agencies start to tell the truth about the dictator, like the fact that the Russians interfered in the election, or that the North Koreans are continuing to build their nuclear weapons, um, then, or that the Saudi crown prince is involved in the murder of a U.S. resident, Jamal Khashoggi, Trump does not then side with the U.S. intelligence agencies. He sides with his new friend, who is the dictator. You know, it's interesting. There was a recent piece um, from uh, national security experts who say that Beyond all the uh, issues that this uh, brings along for national security and our standing on the global stage, him butting up with these folks, it actually has a reverse um, consequence in that these international strongmen tend, tend to look at somebody like Trump, who all it will take is a kind word, they'll view that as a certain weakness that's pliable that they can manipulate. It it's actually has the inverse consequence of, I think, what he thinks. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, the common view of Trump and the view he likes to cultivate in the United States is that he's a strong man. He's tough. He stands up to our enemies. But look at the North Koreans as an example, right? Trump stood up to North Korea as long as he had a feud going with Kim Jong-un. As soon as Kim Jong-un turned around and said, hey, let's have a summit, and Trump saw... Trump saw glamour in this. He was an, it was an opportunity for him to be a peacemaker. He became Kim Jong-un's biggest apologist. And there have been now two summits where U.S. officials who do nuclear arms work are saying, no, 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 the North Koreans are not denuclearizing. And Trump is out there basically shilling for the North Korean regime and telling U.S. reporters, oh, ignore the satellite pictures of what the North Koreans are doing at their secret weapons facilities. So he's not a strong man at all. He's very easy to con, and every head of every foreign government, including our enemies, have learned that trick. And William, what, as bad as that is, and I mean, you can go down the list. It's not just the ones that we've gone through. I mean, you've got uh, you know strongmen in basically every corner of this country who see an ally in the president. He does it, and he compounds it by attacking our own intelligence agencies and our own press for reporting the facts. When we do, we are the quote-unquote enemy of the people. It's not some guy who brings a bone saw and decapitates an American nationalist who happens to be a reporter. It's not protesters on American soil getting roughed up by Erdogan's guys. Um, 
it is the press for actually reporting it or it is his own intelligence agencies for actually showing the satellite photos that debunk the idea that these are good guys. That to me, at the end, is the most shocking. Right in front of us all, believe them, don't believe the Americans. Yes, uh, I mean, the fundamental problem with Trump is that his narcissism makes real genuine patriotism impossible. So for example, you often hear him talk about, you know, my intelligence people, the people I appointed. Anyone I didn't appoint uh, is one of Obama's intelligence people. It's like it's not like he understands that well, they all work for the United States of America and we're all Americans. No, there's Trump's America and then there's the, Mer the America that doesn't like Trump. And if officials of the US intelligence agencies say things that Donald Trump doesn't like, because they are true but inconvenient to Trump's friends like Putin, Trump doesn't turn on Putin. Trump turns on those intelligence officials and he proceeds to denounce them as not really supporting him. And so he doesn't really understand the idea that Americans are in it together. And that is a, that is a national security risk. And you know, as I'm going through the piece and in it, um, William lays out here example after example in only two and a half years, um, of some of these international, not just missteps here, but jaw droppers, you even have the likes of Bolton um, having to pick his jaw off the floor. And he's a lunatic when he says to the president, we had talking points. You're not supposed to basically let Erdogan go right in there and, you know, start another war, basically going after whoever he'd like, whether it be the Syrians or, you know, basically ignoring ISIS and everything the intel team gave you on basically an index card to read. I, there is no line that seemingly won't be crossed. And I think we're just too used to this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's go back to your first point about realpolitik. Bolton is realpolitik. Bolton is America first. So he, he thinks that that's what Trump is. And then Bolton ends up on this phone call in December where Trump is on one end and the Turkish president Erdogan is on the other. And Erdogan is telling him, why don't you get out of Syria? Because Erdogan wants to go in there and kill the Kurds. And Bolton is telling Trump, don't do it. So here's the president of the United States. He's on a phone call with his national security advisor, who is an America first hawk. And on the other end is the Turkish president. And Trump says, sure, I'll go with the Turkish president. And he literally on the phone call changes U.S. policy and the national security advisor. And by the way, the defense secretary and everybody else who was opposed to that change just gets cut out. As we say, you cannot make this stuff up here, but a real fascinating piece, and I encourage people to go check it out. William Salander, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. All right, coming up next, UVA goes from a historic upset just last year to a historic victory last night. We'll have more on that after this.